Hi there and welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. Now, if you've been following my series of workouts from five minutes all the way up to 20 minutes where we are now, you'll find that this row is gonna be the next kind of generation of tough rows. This is gonna prepare you for what's to come next because what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a four minute warm up, and then once we're happy, we're gonna get it into two minutes at 20 strokes a minute, five out of 10 effort, we all love that one. Then we're gonna do two minutes at 24 strokes a minute, and then we're gonna increase that to seven out of 10 effort and then we're going to do two minutes at 30 strokes a minute and that's going to be really getting up to that like nine or ten out of ten effort and then we're going to back off all the way back down to 20 do it all again do it all again and then we're going to finish off with two minutes just to make sure that we're properly cooled down at that 20 strokes a minute again i know it all sounds like there's a lot going on but don't worry about it just follow me when i tell you to change stroke rate and intensity and your 20 minutes will just go whoosh and it'll all be over all right so like i said we're going to do a four minute warm-up first but we have to set up our machine first and on an Averon that means setting up your resistance first. Now I usually row with mine around about 12 for a tough row but on these training rows with the mixed kind of intensities and stuff I'll back it off down to nine. Now what you're looking for is a nice feel from the stroke where you connect to it but you don't have to actually heave and like tug against it and neither do you want to be rowing through air and if you're using the Averon Concept 2 app on a Concept 2 that's kind of where you want to be setting your lever for your drag factor is that kind of nice sensation of a stroke. If you know about drag factor I recommend setting it between 120 and 130 if you have no idea where to set it then set your lever to five for the time being and then read up about drag factor so you know exactly where to set it all right next up then we have to set our foot stretchers and the foot stretcher height what you want it to be at is at a point where you're able to come into the front of the stroke with your shins in a vertical position comfortably okay if you're set too high in the foot stretchers it can get a bit tough to get there if you're set too low, it can be a bit easy to go past and your backside escapes from underneath you. A good guide here is that the strap covers the bottom lace in your shoe, which should then mean it goes across the balls of your feet. And that's a good starting point, and then you can adjust from there for your comfort and however your flexibility works, okay? So, gonna get into a four minute warm up. We're gonna do this at run about 20 strokes a minute and I just want you to push lightly into the machine to start and then we'll increase our intensity after a minute, do some drills, have a drink, do our main session and we're all done. All right, sound like a plan to you? Good, right, let's get going then. In five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. So really gentle start here. Unless, of course, maybe you've just been doing something else. Maybe you've gone for a run first, or you've been on the cross trainer or the bike, and you're already warmed up. In which case, you can probably start off at that 5 out of 10 intensity. But for mere mortals like me, who've spent the whole morning at my desk and haven't really been moving much, I need to make sure that my body gets moving and that I can ease into this without any risk of injury. Because if you do start off at full whack, then sometimes if your body's not ready for it, it's your back that really suffers, that suddenly goes, wait, what was that? What are we doing? What? We're rowing, ah! It goes into some kind of a spasm, so. I speak from experience, <laughs> and trust me. Right, one more stroke here, and then now we can start to increase our intensity to get up to that five out of 10 intensity. This is where your heart rate starts to increase. Your breathing rate starts to increase. You can really kind of begin to feel the force of the stroke now as you push your legs into each stroke. And it should really feel Run about the same intensity as if you were walking upstairs, okay, where if you just keep on going, it becomes quite a lot of hard work. Well, not a lot, but it becomes hard work. And that's what you're aiming for here. Shouldn't feel awful, as though you're running upstairs, but it should still feel like effort. Okay, two more strokes, and then we're going to take one foot out and put it on the ground. So, unstrap and get that foot on the ground, and then continue to row, and then rock over your toes as you come forwards, and then onto your heel as you come backwards. But keep that foot on the ground. It'll keep you grounded, and it'll let you compress forwards 
properly into a shins vertical position with a forwards tilt of your back. Let's swap feet. Whee! Whoops, okay, next one. And continue to row here. Pushing with that leg that's still strapped in to make sure it's still getting activated. And that you're still just continuing the warm up. We're starting off at a nice five out of 10 effort in today's row anyway, so we don't need to be absolutely purring along yet. Let's put both feet back in, tighten them up, legs straight, row with your back and arms. As you swing over your back, pull in your arms, release your arms, rock forwards over your back again. And this is really important as a phase of the rowing stroke that you get used to your back swing before your arms pull in. Let's take one more here. Roll into the front with arms straight and forwards tilt and push with your legs because this is what happens first in your rowing stroke that you drive out of the front with a forwards tilt and arms straight. So your arms and back don't put any real force into the stroke. It's all legs from the front and your arms and back are just conduits for the power from your legs. Last stroke here. There we go. So keep on moving up and down the rail, have a quick drink and I'll explain one more time what it is we're doing today. Okay, the hoodie is off and I'm ready for action. Now, while I'm explaining this, just have a little bit of a wiggle of your backside to release the pressure of your sit bones on your glutes, which can cause some discomfort. So, today's row is going to be two minutes at 20 strokes a minute and five out of 10 intensity, followed by two minutes at 24 strokes a minute and seven out of 10 intensity. And then we're going to go out to 30 strokes a minute uh, for two minutes, and that's going to be round about 10 out of 10, nine to 10 out of 10 intensity. And what I want you to do is find the pace each time that we go through this because we're going to go through it three times and I want you to keep on going back to the same paces three times. Then we're going to finish off the roll with two minutes down at 20 strokes a minute, five out of 10 intensity, just to make sure that we're nicely cooled down after what will be a good old spicy workout, all right? So if you're ready for this, which I hope you are, we're going to get started in five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. So 20 strokes a minute for two minutes, which will be like a nice way to kind of continue our warm up. I'm having a little bit of an issue with my lovely new shoes coming out of the heel cup right now. Hopefully that's fixed it. Um, yeah, so two minutes, 20 strokes a minute, at that five out of 10, walking up a flight of stairs intensity. This will just continue to make sure that your body is nice and ready for the more intense stroke rates today. Remember, the kind of the biggest thing that you want to get eased off here is your hips and that rocking forwards into the front of the machine holding that forwards tilt as you push your legs and then only swinging your back at the back half of your leg drive if that makes sense so you're pumping forwards and backwards forwards and backwards forwards and backwards from like a one o'clock tilt to an 11 o'clock tilt on a clock face. And that kind of pumping, hinging over your hips is kind of key to getting power into the machine, but also making sure you're in the right positions for each stroke and also taking the power through your body and making sure you're protected against injury, okay? So, in five strokes time, we're going to push harder with our legs and increase stroke rate and pace. Here we go, after this one, you're ready. So I want you to drive faster push harder with the legs so that gives you a faster drive speed increase your recovery speed slightly too and what you should find is that you're up at 24 
strokes a minute. And also, you should be going five or six seconds faster than you were when you were rowing at 20 strokes a minute. And you're aiming for that perceived effort here of run about seven or eight out of 10. So try to find your pace range where this feels a fair bit tougher than 20 strokes a minute, but it doesn't feel like you're going at a all out pace. You still have to have room so that when we increase up to 30 strokes a minute in 30 seconds time, you've got somewhere to go. So keep an eye on your pace for how fast you're rowing right now. Remember it for the next time we row at 24 strokes a minute. But I also want you to try and increase by six or seven seconds again. After this stroke, you ready? Let's go. So push harder with the legs and really you're going to be closer now to one second drive and one second recovery. And hopefully you've increased by five or six seconds pace too. I've gone from 158 to 152 and I'm now at 143. But don't worry about my actual numbers. We're all different. Just make sure that you have the same differences or same runabout differences when you increase from 20 to 24 and then 24 to 30. Remember, you can follow me for stroke rate, but if you're finding it tricky, just think about the handle, getting it away smoothly, but quickly from your body. If you hold it against your body or take too long, it'll really slow down your stroke rate. Okay, two more here. One more, I'm back to 20 strokes a minute. Woo! There we go. So that is how we're doing today's row. Whew. Got two more of these runs to go and then we're all finished. Well, after that little cool down, but hopefully, I mean, hopefully you can tell that I'm using this to kind of recover, ready for the increases to come. My heart rate is definitely higher than it was the last time I rode at 20 strokes a minute. But I'm making sure to hold the same pace. So I'm still rowing at 158 pace, regardless of the fact it feels 
put like from a perceived effort point of view this is definitely feeling tougher than it did the last time I rode at this pace and that's why I was saying keep an eye on your speed so that you can return to them because perceived effort starts to go out the window a bit the further you get into this row okay two more strokes one more and let's go back up to 24 so push harder with your legs faster drive speed use your handle return to help you with a faster recovery here you go know, this may comparatively having been through the 30 strokes a minute phase this may feel comparatively easier than it did the last time you're at 24 it's funny how the brain works that way where last time you might have gone oh this six second increase feels a bit tough now you're like Fuh. it's a walk in the park compared to holding 30 strokes a minute for two minutes but if you're doing the progression in my zero to hero workouts maybe building up your time on the machine then you'll hopefully already have rode 20 minutes at a low intensity so you know you're capable of that and so by adding in this 24 and 28 sorry 30 what am I saying 30 strokes a minute this is how you build up your capacity to be able to increase your intensity and duration even more okay two more strokes one more and let's go to 30 yeah let's not say 28 30 and so whatever pace you managed to row at last time at these 30s I want you to try to get there again remember you've got those two minutes at 20 strokes a minute coming after this to let your body recover a little bit and if you think to how I laid these out in terms of intensity this is meant to feel really tough almost max so don't worry if you're feeling fatigued and as though you're almost on the edge of what you can achieve hopefully you know that with only where are we 15 strokes to go you can get to the end of these 30 strokes a minute you don't have to slow down within this cycle you can wait another five strokes four three two one back down to 20 strokes a minute let your body settle be careful not to go too slow here you want to hit 
the pace that you set the previous two times at 20 strokes a minute but also hopefully now that we're over 30 seconds into this period you slow down enough because it's quite easy to kind of keep that intensity high even though you lower the stroke rate and this is meant to help you recover because after all as much as I'm saying this is meant to be a tough workout it's not meant to be one that will leave you on the ground afterwards suffering from overexertion for the first 12 workouts of the Zero to Hero series it's meant to be about helping you increase the duration that you can row for and then the next phase starts to be about increasing duration and intensity too so that's what this is dipping your toe into okay two more and then we go up to 24 strokes a minute for the last time for two minutes so don't do what I just did and come out of the come out of the start like a like a greyhound still stay controlled it's not a whole load faster than 20 strokes a minute all it takes is a bit of an extra push of the legs a bit of a faster recovery and as a result of the faster drive that added power and the fact that you're doing four strokes per minute more than you were at 20 strokes a minute this is how you should see your pace increase and it really is I mean this workout is the perfect way to see how it's a combination of power from the legs and a higher stroke rate that makes you go faster so if you're looking to row faster whether it's in competition or even on one of the games on Averon then hopefully this is really teaching you that it's about rate and power both of which we're going to have to do in two strokes time one more and let's go up to 30 for two more minutes and then we'll get that two minute easy pace to cool down before the end and do really try to think here on these higher rates about at least one aspect of good technique whether that's keeping arms straight at the drive and only pulling at the back of the stroke or holding a forwards tilt and only swinging when your legs are about halfway through the drive but even how far you slide makes a huge difference it can be tempting to shorten 
your slide by quite a lot in order to keep your stroke rate high but you shouldn't need to certainly at 30 strokes a minute as long as you get the handle away from you to trigger your forward rock and then that slide you should be able to make it all the way there okay one more and now let's ease to 20 strokes per minute Ooh. still try to hold your pace that you've been rowing at for 20s because well if you've seen enough of my workouts you'll know that I tend to add on 90 seconds worth of chat as I say goodbye to you once we're stopped and so if you back off the intensity even more and let your body really ease down through the paces while I'm saying goodbye then it means you can still hold this intensity at the right pace so I'm still 157 158 right now as I kind of come into home so although this was a 20 minute tough workout the fact that we're finishing on a nice gentle pace for two minutes actually makes this really easy <laughs> but do really think about that back rock here arms nice and straight even when you're rowing slowly you want to use this to really grind in your good technique okay one more stroke for me here you can continue rowing lightly otherwise a big well done because that was like I said the toughest of the workouts so far in this progression out of the first 12 workouts that take you from five minutes as though you're just a new rower all the way up to being able to do that kind of a row and hopefully it's within your realms to do that yes the 24s feel a little bit harder and yes the 30s feel really tough I felt that it was really tough it's not like I'm sitting here and it's a walk in the park for me I was properly heart rate up completely out of breath finding it hard to speak which means me isn't I can't find it hard to speak whereas that's my whole USP <laughs> so it's meant to have felt tough through that so if you felt that it was a hard uh, row then good because that's how you get better that's how you're able to progress and do more by kind of adding in a little bit of intensity to help your body grow to then be able to do a little bit more and then the next time you can do like a 25 minute low intensity row in order to build up and be able to row for 25 minutes so this is kind of just how your body responds it's that by just kind of mixing up intensities your body never plateaus it always gets better and you'll therefore get better as well okay so there we go it's a bit of a long uh, outro for this one but I really hope you enjoyed it it was a great 20 minute row I know I definitely enjoyed it uh, and I'm going to go and do some stretching afterwards go have some lunch chicken noodles today so that'd be lovely um, and yeah, and I will see you in the next set of videos. So do keep an eye out for uh, the other videos that will help you progress and get further, whether you're doing the Zero to Hero uh, playlist or not. It's entirely up to you, but hopefully you just enjoyed this 20 minute workout, even if it was a standalone. So the last thing to do is just give out a hashtag for today's row, and it's going to be Tough 20, because that's what it was, okay? Thank you so much for joining me for this one. I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care, be well, bye-bye.